What happens when the world gets turned on its head? We're forced to look inward, perhaps become fearful, sometimes lash out at others. While there are others in the world who don't give up hope because they believe in people. Join me, Kevin Tibbles and Amy Goldberg, for our new podcast, Believe in People, where we meet those who don't give up hope. Out of the hard times in life comes rebirth. Out of the hard times in life, we grow. Those are the words of today's guest, Coco Love Alcorn. Yes, she's a singer and a great artist in her own right, but she also uses her music to help others. And during the pandemic, Coco created an online choir where people could discover the healing power of music for themselves. Coco, welcome to Believe in People. Hi! (laughs) It's a pleasure to have you here. Coco, during the pandemic, now I know from a very good source, a friend of mine, Karen Williams, that Karen Williams Miller, that you created during the pandemic an online choir called Wonderland Singers. Let's start from there. How did that come about? Uh, okay. Well, um, I've been, uh, I've been a singer songwriter for a number of years now, and this is the longish answer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) about, about seven years ago, one of my songs, the river, uh, got picked up by a bunch of choirs. In fact, I, I put a video on YouTube of me singing the song, um, before I had even recorded it for the album and choirs, started singing this song yeah before before i had even made it on a record so by the time i went to the studio to record the song properly there were i think 30 choirs singing it and then uh when i released the album i invited choirs to join me on stage on my tour and for about four years i was visiting choirs they were guesting with me i was doing singing workshops as i traveled And I had never, uh, 10 years ago, if you had asked me, Hey, Coco, you're going to be, are you going to be a choir director someday? I would not have known that this was coming down the pipes for me. But, um, I guess it was about four and a half years ago. I was so in love with, um, the world of community singing that, that spirit, that feeling of a group of people gathered in a room and raising their voices together. I was so in love with that feeling. I started a choir in my hometown and uh, I also had the thought as I traveled, what if some of these singers from all across Canada and beyond could somehow sing with me from all their different places while I was at home? But four and a half years ago, if I had put that out there in the world, uh, people weren't ready for it. And then that thing happened three years ago. <laughs> the, the thing. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I um, I suspended my in person choir and started to host our rehearsals online, and and then I invited people from anywhere and everywhere to join in, and uh, it became a Wonderland Singers Zoom Choir. But I'm also calling it sort of like a a singing workshop series as well. So it's it's sort of a few things wrapped in one. Everyone else is muted. So they are each having an individual experience of singing with me, but they can see each other. They can chat with each other in the chat. So they are having individual musical experiences, but in the fellowship of a group. So it feels like a choir, but um, I also, um, as well as teaching harmony parts, and songs. I'm also sharing ideas of improvisation and solo creative exploration and giving them space and chances to try things as individuals. So it's a group practice and an individual practice all together. Oh my gosh, it's such a long answer. Hi, I'd love to hear your voices again. (laughs) Well, fortunately for you, it's my turn to ask a question. And my question is going to be like a three-pronger uh, because, because, oh yeah, sure, it's a workshop and people can zoom in and they can sing. Okay, that's really great. Um, except for one thing, it's more than that. It, you mentioned the song "The River." Okay, 
Water heal my body. Water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, the water, by the water, I feel whole. There's a whole healing part of this. And as you mentioned, when you came on here, we had this thing for the last three years that just happens to be ramping up again for this winter. Um, so yes, these people are coming on for a workshop. Yes, they're singing, but there's, there's, there's something else that's happening perhaps inside of them. And I'd like you to describe, I mean, if you're telling me that 30 choirs started singing this song prior to it even being released, there has to be something about you and your song that is touching people. And the final prong, after you answer that very emotional question, is where is the river? <laughs> oh my gosh, where I'm like crying. I'm crying over here. Uh, the river is about two blocks away from me. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> but it's the river an is sound, it. Ontario. Yeah, this is the Sydenham River that I live nearby. Uh, mm -hmm. But the river is is everywhere. The river is is all all water, which yeah. we are so connected to. Um, yeah. yeah. So if I had uh, a river, gosh. I would I could I could skate away. Skate that's away. On. <laughs> yes. I'd Thank you, Joni. That's someone else's song, but <laughs> that's uh, Joni Mitchell. Also, yes, it is. I mean, yeah. you, every Canadian is either writing about winter or water. Rivers. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, winter but, is just um, frozen <laughs> water. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young, down by the river. Let's keep going. I want you to yeah. answer the first question, the emotional. Oh, one. gosh. Which one was that again? <laughs> That's the one. I mean, what what is it about this song <laughs> that is touching these people? Um, it, It's hard for me to speak for other people, but I can say that that song has been a huge blessing in my life and it's continued to travel. I I have lost count. There must be well over 500 choirs that have sung this song now i continually get people sending me notes asking to use it for films people downloading the music off the website to teach it to their choirs um it's traveled a lot in the unitarian church in the states um i think I, there's something about maybe the like if i could exactly put my finger on it i'd be writing the next song exactly like that every day but <laughs> there's something about um maybe the the some the combination of the simplicity and the the depth or the truth or so, or something like that but it's it's weird to say that about my own song but I'm just happy that I was home that day and it was a song that came fairly quickly and flowed fairly smoothly from me so I, I heard this this quote once, I forget who it's by, but there was a female author from a hundred-ish years ago, a poet, and she said something, maybe you guys will know this. She said something about being outside and sitting under a tree, and then a poem comes wafting by on the breeze, and she has to jump up and and uh, race to get to her pen and paper in her house before the poem has passed on by and she can no longer catch it. Something about catching that poem and writing it down. And I, when the river came, I happened to be where I needed to be. I didn't even have to jump up from under the tree and chase it down. I was where I needed to be. And I'm really thankful for that. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm, and, I'm and desperately, I, desperately Googling uh, wafting by poems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And while yeah, Kevin is doing while, while Kevin is doing that, Coco, um, yeah. Well, I certainly know from your audience reviews, and one being my friend Karen Miller Williams, is that she there's a sense of community. She re recognized, and and actually, she's a healthcare worker. She recognized uh, within her community, within your Zoom community, this this um, magic. And she couldn't stop talking about it. It was a magic. Mm -hmm. It was a healing. It was a connectivity. And you made that happen. And I actually really hope, do you, will you be singing that song today? Yeah, actually, I could, I could sing that today for sure. Oh, yeah. we'd be absolutely thrilled. <laughs> so, so you, I mean, you've, you've had quite the career. I mean, you did, did you won in 2021, the, uh, uh, the contemporary singer of the year award, uh, for folk music award for the folk music award. Where did you see that? Uh, well, it was in, you know, the times where we were all at home. So it came in the mail to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of me on 
Facebook somewhere of me holding up this giant glass award uh, right by my picnic table. Oh, it's right here. I'll get it. Oh, yes. yes. We'd love to see it. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. That's where Kevin keeps his awards. Here it is. I, I <laughs> received right, this award and I've, I've barely left Owen Sound since. So this is exciting to get to show it. There you go. You can't really, you can sort of see it. It's etched in the wow. glass. Contemporary. That's terrific. Singer of the Year. And, and before this, I, um, I've had a, a 30-year career in music, and I've hopped around an incredible amount between a lot of different genres. And I think I would say, hmm, I spent about uh, 28 years, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, being nominated for awards and then not winning them. <laughs> so when this came in the mail, uh, yeah, gosh, you guys keep making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested uh, in knowing your reaction to the fact so many people have taken to your music and the fact that they are singing your songs in order to heal themselves during a pandem- pandemic. How does that touch you? It's really, really beautiful. I um, Well, this podcast is called I Believe in People. and. And, and I do. And I especially believe in, in the human spirit, in how, how resilient it is and how we need each other and how we draw on um, music, we draw on nature, we draw on community um, to, <laughs> to connect, to connect with each other and with that, I, I call it the nuggety center. You know, when you're looking for a word that's different than spirit and heart and core, I call it our nuggety center. We all have this special <laughs> little spot inside that um, that's always there for us. And yeah, so I, I do believe in people so deeply. And um, I, I guess maybe when I wrote this song, The River, it was maybe, yeah, I said it was seven years ago. I I had decided to put a focus on trying to write songs that were not specifically connected to any denomination or religion, but that spoke to that, to our spirits, spoke to that, that special, whatever it is, to our nuggety centers. And I called those, I called those the spirit sessions. And I started writing with that um, goal in mind. And uh, yeah, the river came and, uh, and uh, pretty much most of the songs I've written since then have been trying to write in a really simple and truthful way about connecting with ourselves, connecting with the moment, connecting with each other, uh, looking at the world and, and seeing, uh, you can see the hard times, but having hope and faith that things can get better anyway. Yeah. And, and Coco, you were brought up in Antigonish, uh, Nova Scotia. Well, actually, I was born there, but just like in music, how I've been genre hopping, I've spent <laughs> my life kind of city and province hopping. I was born in Antigonish and then grew up kind of mostly in Vancouver and Toronto, but also bits in Nova Scotia. So, yeah. <laughs> so, what inspired you? Like, when when did you start getting into singing? How did you know this was going to be your thing and something that you could spread? Ah, um, music's huge in my family and arts. I come from uh, a family of 11 on my mom's side, a family of six on my dad's side. And there's musicians and actors and authors and directors and all all those things. So, uh, I don't even know when I decided, I still haven't decided. (laughs) I don't know what I'll be when I grow up, (laughs) but, um, yeah, our, yeah, music was always just, it was just there, if that makes sense. Well, I guess you'll also have to sing Farewell to Nova Scotia for us then <laughs> later on in our little podcast. I still need to <laughs> learn that song. If you know it, maybe you can sing it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll have to call up Hank Snow, he'll tell me, or Don Messer. Nice. <laughs> you know, when we were kids, and I don't, I'm, I'm digressing, I'm wasting time, but when we were kids as a family, we actually went to Halifax in the car because that's what everybody does. And you go to Peggy's Cove and on the way you go to the Magnetic Hill and Moncton and 
you do a lot of jazz. We went to Don Messer's house and stood at the end of the driveway. Don Messer, for those who don't know, uh, had a television show, and it was kind of like a grand old Opry kind of television show. And he was a fiddler, and he had singers like uh, Marge Osborne and everyone on, and it came on every week, and it was kind of like a tradition. Anyway, we went and stood at the end of his driveway, and uh, we stood there as if we were standing outside Graceland. And I'm, I'm serious about that. We were standing there looking at Don Messer's house, and it was like such a moving experience. But well, did I'm he digressing come out? only. I'm di- Kevin, no, he, I don't even know if he was home. <laughs> it wasn't even his house. <laughs> well, we were too polite. We would have had, we would have had to gone up and knock at the door and then apologize because that's what you do. But uh, I digress only to say so much musical tradition comes from the Maritimes of Canada, and it's not very often uh, recognized. Newfoundland kitchen parties and uh, obviously PEI and, and Nova Scotia. But how do you, Coco, get people to come on and sing? And I'm assuming they're all looking into their computer, which is what we're doing right now. But how do you, how do you get them to overcome their isolation and to open up and belt it out? Aren't they nervous? Uh, well, I think only the people that... Or you get a bunch of hands on it. You got a bunch of hands on there? <laughs> no, I mean, everyone can, everyone's free to approach it how they want. So some, some of my members are cameras off for various reasons. Sometimes they're singing along uh, while they're driving in the car and they're just singing along with oh, their yeah, podcast, their, the their, their, their phone, you know, uh, some people, you know, their internet speed isn't as good. So their camera is off. Um, some people, uh, a lot of people have their camera on and, and they're, 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 everyone can just be how they are. I make it completely open. I offer the choir at two prices, full price and reduced price. And anyone can choose either price for any reason. Uh, attendance is not tracked. So some people come every week and they come right at the beginning and they don't leave till the bitter end. And uh, some people miss half the session. Some people slide in halfway through. Um, it's all very easy, breezy and open. And I know, um, you know, some people try it and it doesn't work for them. It doesn't fit in their schedule. They feel funny or whatever, but lots of people who try it end up loving it and discovering that it feels more real and more connected than they, than they had thought. And they're hearing harmonies because I'm using loopers to layer my voice. So they see the faces and they hear layers of voices. Um, yeah, but they, yeah, they're, that's, that's really clever. Coco, that's yeah. really clever. And then just before you sing your song, I, yes, yeah. because I, I was walked through your process and typically I think, you know, all uh, mics would be on and you'd start to sing and then people's ears may hurt because it doesn't sound as, let's say, perhaps as perfect as it could be. But you, what you do is you've given the opportunity to hear you, to hear the chorus or the, the, uh, the various sounds, but they're mute. And so they still get that, that feeling, but they're using their voice sort of behind the scenes. Am I, am I yeah. saying it correctly? Yeah, no, I love it. Um, like at the beginning of three years ago when the thing happened, <laughs> um, <laughs> a- all the choirs were muted and technology has advanced and there are some online singing events happening where people can log in in a way where they can all be unmuted together. But I, I don't believe I will ever do that because that's a different thing. Um, in my choir and in my singing happenings, um, of course, I, I wish I could also be in a room with all of these people and we could sing together and I may launch annual summer retreats any summer now. I keep talking about it. But for, for this experience in this Wonderland Singers thing, I love that people are muted because it gives each of them the anonymity to explore how they want. So, um, no one's stuck in a section. No one's like, oh, I'm an alto. I have to always sing the alto part. My choir is high, middle, low. You can sing any part you want in any octave you want, or you can float around on top and make your own part. <laughs> if you want to sing the lead vocal on a song, then learn the verses and sing the lead vocal. You've got it. Like 
we can have a hundred lead vocalists at the same time on a song. So I just, I love that. <laughs> and what song are you going to sing for us now? Okay. Uh, I will sing. Well, there's two that I want to sing for you, the river. And there's another song called, uh, gonna get over. <laughs> Which do you want to hear first? Do you want to hear the river? Well, let's hear or the river because song? we've talked yeah. it up so much. And, uh, Put me on mute right now so I can try to sing along, too. That was a joke. <laughs> Amy, Amy uh, often wants to put me on mute. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, maybe we maybe we will mute you guys while while I sing so you guys can, can uh, <laughs> sing along if you want. But normally in a choir session, I would, you know, teach a couple of parts before we do the song. But I'll just I'll just sing this song. Here we go. Sing, uh, sing away. Is, OK, we're this looking forward to the it. river. Yay. Okay, let me make sure my volume's still good on this song. Do let me just catch a key here. One sec. I'm gonna guess it's this one. I love guessing. Doom. Hey, I guessed it correctly. That doesn't always happen. You did. It's a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing <laughs> Coco Love Alcorn. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Doom 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 doom. Oh. Woo. Yo, 
That was gorgeous. Thank you very much. That was Thank beautiful. you. That's I mean, that's a real spiritual. I can understand why choirs are lining up for the privilege of singing that song. Um, and I know you have another one for us. I, I just want to ask, uh, I don't know if the other one's going to be a different style or genre or, or what. I mean, what types of songs do you sing with the choir? Are you singing Dylan? Are you singing pop songs? Or are they, are they, um, are they more, I mean, I wouldn't call that a religious song, but it certainly could be. It's a song of hope and healing and, and uh, those sorts of things. So what do you say to that? Uh, I have an answer. <laughs> would that be a three? Would that be a three prong question again? Yeah, I'm big on the three <laughs> prongers. Like it. Sounds like it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we actually have sung a Bob Dylan song um, in our sessions. So they're twelve week sessions, and I run three of them a year. And yeah. uh, we will have a, a selection of like eight to twelve, what I call core songs, and um, they're usually about half my songs and half cover songs. And the first couple of years we were doing this, I really did try to have like, I think every song we were doing for that first couple of years was all in, in that umbrella of what I'd say, like non-denominational spirit-ish songs, yeah. just songs yeah. that are kind of uplifting in some sort of a way. Um, and, but recently I've started getting crazy and we've had like, you know, a couple of love songs in there. <laughs> uh, we did Monster Mash for Halloween. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> no, we did. I, I, got, I got it in here on one of these loopers. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I try to mix it up. So, so I'll always have a set of core songs. And on the website, every member gets an access to the members page where there's learning audio files for all the songs. So if a member wants to, they can practice outside of the sessions and learn all the parts and learn the tricky things. Um, or they can just tune into the sessions and completely ignore the, the learning files on the members page. But uh, we'll also do songs of the moment where I'll just kind of say, hey, this is call and response. Let's go. And then we'll just kind of sing it. <laughs> yeah. Every week, um, Amy and I ask the same question. As, as you mentioned earlier, our little podcast is called Believe in People. Of course, you totally jumped the gun because you already Oops. went out there and answered the question so stridently before we even had the chance to ask it. But um, because we're very quick on our toes here at Believe in People, and you are singing and writing music and changing other people's lives through it, I'm going to just put a little twist on the question, and that is, why do you believe in music? Ooh, that's a that's a good one, Kevin. That's really good. <laughs> You're working here. Ah, <sighs> um, I think I think music is just an amazing uh, avenue, conduit, medium for for connection, for connecting with ourselves, connecting with others, connecting with the moment. It already does that. And uh, as I mentioned uh, a little bit previously, I, about seven years ago, I, I decided to put a focus on trying to write songs that would uh, explore that even, even more, more deeply. Why do I believe in music? It's just there for us. And I also think that, that music is everywhere and music is everything. Like, or everything is music. Um, like every sound we hear could start a song or be something that inspires you. I, I don't know. I just love music. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I also, to me, it's the combination of music and people. Um, I have a hard time wanting to make music by myself. So uh, that's a struggle for me is uh, I don't sit down to write songs often enough because I find it not very inspiring or fun to sit around and make music by myself. So as much as people are tuning in to sing with me, uh, with my group, and I run two weekly sessions, um, I, I need those two times a week. I need them just as much as they need me. I might need them even more because, uh, 
that's when I make music. I, I love the energy of people. So I believe in people and I believe in music <laughs> and I believe so strongly in music and people together. To me, that's like a really magical combination. Well, I think go. Coco, this is a perfect opportunity for you to sing this podcast out because you have a brand new community within Believe in People. So please, it's take it away. Thank okay. You so much. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. Yay. Okay. Well, uh, um, feel free to join my winter choir. We'll be starting another 12 week session in February. Um, this song is going to get over. It's called going to get over, or maybe it's called get on over. I haven't decided yet. This is unreleased. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, you heard yeah. it here on believe in people. Yeah. So here we go. Um, it's got call and response verses. So we'll see how this works. <laughs> without a, a choir online with me, but I'm going to pretend you're there singing with me and I'm going to uh, invite you to sing along. And uh, the chorus is uh, kind of also call and response. No, the verses aren't call and response. It's the chorus that's call and response. I'm mixing it up. With them. Don't worry about it. Let's just sing the song. Enough chit chat. Here we go. All right. Oh, I can tell. Yeah, we need more volume. Hey, hey, hey. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Verse one. <laughs> we are going to cross over hill and street. We are going to Awaken from this dream. We're gonna get over, gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. Gonna get over, gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. Gonna get over, gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. We're gonna get over, gonna get on over to the other side. We are gonna heal with the earth and sea. We are gonna live how it's meant to be. We're gonna get over. Side. To the other side, we're gonna get over. We're gonna get over to the other side. To the other side, we're gonna get over. We're gonna get over to the other side. To the other side, we're gonna get over. We're gonna get on over to the other side. We're gonna get over. To the other side. To the other side, gonna get over. To the other side, to the other side, we're gonna get over. We're gonna get over to the other side, to the other side. We're gonna get over, gonna, gonna get, get on over to the other side. All right, if you got something in your life that you're trying to get to the other side of, let's think about that. It can be anything, it can be everything some struggle, some wall, some barrier you've put up in front of yourself. Even ourselves can can get in the way of ourselves. Let's see if we can sing our way past that barrier. Here we go. We're just going to free sing. Here we go. Hey, 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 Gonna get over to the other side one more time. Gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. Gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. Gonna get over to the other side. To the other side. Gonna get over. Gonna get on over to the other side. 
Gonna get over, gonna get on over to the other side. Gonna get over, gonna get on over to the other side. I'm gonna get over, gonna get on over to the other side. Yay. Thank you. That was fantastic. Wow. You warmed our hearts. Thank you, Coco. Woohoo! Thanks for Thanks, having Coco. me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amy and Kevin. Well, I'm inspired by all of that. I mean, such, such spiritual music. And, um, and of course, I got all caught up on the music of the Maritimes in Canada, and I didn't even mention Anne Murray or Sarah McLaughlin. Or, uh, or the Great Big Sea, or all these other kinds of uh, wonderful artists that come from there. But here we go from Anaganish, Nova Scotia, via Vancouver and Toronto. I'm telling you, Coco, uh, Coco and her choir have certainly made my day. Amy. Well, she's made my day because Kevin, you um, you're homesick, and so we think that you should come <laughs> back to Canada. So that's uh, that's reason enough. Uh, no, she's really incredible. I mean, when she started singing, my heart just warmed. And uh, I guess that's the, the whole intent of she she wrapped a community around her voice and her singing. And that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's real talent. And if you've enjoyed that, um, Coco can be found on, she has a YouTube channel, but she also has a website called wonderlandsingers.com. So we encourage you to check that out. And if you want to join her choir as well, believe in people if you want to subscribe we would encourage that because then you'll we will be able to send you hope every week a little dose of hope and we just appreciate you joining us so thank you so much thank you <laughs>